Okay, and now we're going to hear from Pfizer. Uh, Adam, are you ready? Adam Castaño? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. All right, let me just share my screen. Okay, so uh, Muriel, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure really to be here with you today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Adam Castaño. Uh, I'm a cardiologist and cardiac amyloid specialist by training. Um, and having treated many patients with ACTRCM, I, I really do wish I could be meeting you in person. Uh, but for now, virtual will have to suffice until it's safe for all of us to be together again. Just a quick note that the information presented here uh, is for education purposes. Um, and we were again delighted uh, when we received the invitation from ASG to be a part of this. So as many of you know, uh, we were all thrilled at Pfizer to have received FDA approval for our medicine to Famitis on May 6th, uh, 2019. Specifically, to Famitis is formulated as either Vindicel or Vindamax as stabilizers of the transthyretin protein and uh, are the first and only FDA approved oral therapies indicated for the treatment of the cardiomyopathy of both wild type or hereditary TTR mediated amyloidosis in adults to reduce death and hospitalization related to heart problems. Now, to understand the remarkable story of uh, TTR stabilization, let's first start with understanding transthyretin. And we've heard elegant descriptions of TTR by my colleagues, Dr. Sperry and Akshay and Gustavo. And I'll provide some additional context from the perspective of stabilization. And I, as I used to tell my patients, transthyretin, TTR, it's a naturally occurring protein as we've heard. Uh, it's, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's highly conserved across multiple species, and it's produced primarily by our liver with a small amount also produced in our eye and brain. And it's secreted into our bloodstream. When it functions as a transporter for thyroxine and vitamin A, meaning it plays, as a, it plays an important role in our thyroid function and our vision. Now, TTR circulates in our bloodstream as a tetramer, as we've heard, or as I used to tell my patients with ATTRCM, you can think of it like a four-leaf clover. It's something that exists in nature and has a special conformation when it is clustered together in a unit of four. And we know that an inherited variation or an age-related change to the wild-type protein causes the TTR tetramer to destabilize, resulting in its falling apart into four monomers and herein begins the process of amyloidogenesis or amyloid formation. So to review real quick, in normal situations, four identical pieces of protein stick together to form a larger protein called transthyretin, TTR. This protein is conserved evolutionarily across many species. And when it exists in our bloodstream in this unique four leaf clover-like structure, it transports other proteins that play a role related to our thyroid function and vision. The liver makes the majority of TTR, but a small amount is also made by our eyes and our brain. Sometimes the protein breaks apart and the four leaf clover falls apart into its individual four pieces. These pieces can become unstable and change in shape, ultimately accumulating together into these larger insoluble rigid structures that we call amyloid fibrils that go on to infiltrate in organs around our body. TTR amyloid can affect different organs as we all know and have come to learn, including our heart, the nervous system, GI system, eyes, among other organs. Now, I may be biased a little here as a cardiologist, but remember that the heart here is a remarkable organ because it's made up of not just muscle, but also valves, and it has its own electrical conduction system. Amyloid fibrils can deposit in various parts of the heart, including in the heart muscle itself, the valves, and in the electrical conduction system. Progressively, accumulation of these fibrils in the muscle can lead to thickening and stiffening of the heart walls, ultimately leading to heart failure. And we also believe that deposition throughout the conduction system can lead to conduction disease and atrial arrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation or flutter, and that there may be an association between amyloid and certain valvular conditions like aortic stenosis, for example, which is a growing area of further investigation. And although our medicine Tofaminus is approved in the United States to treat the cardiomyopathy of TTR amyloid. It is important to note also that deposition of TTR amyloid fibrils can also occur in other organs and tissues resulting in non-cardiac symptoms as you've heard elegantly by my colleagues. 
which may include orthopedic manifestations like carpal tunnel syndrome, biceps tendon rupture, lumbar spinal stenosis, and peripheral and autonomic neuropathies like numbness and tingling in your hands and feet, eye disorders, and GI tract problems like diarrhea and constipation and malabsorption of nutrients. So given our understanding of the biology of how amyloid can build up in our body, how can we begin to think about making a medicine to treat this disease? Well, it just so happens that in the early 1990s, Dr. Teresa Coelho, an amyloid expert in Portugal, noticed that some of her patients who carried the ATTR variant val 30 mat which typically causes neuropathy, but can also lead to cardiomyopathy in its late onset form, either had no polyneuropathy symptoms or curiously had uncharacteristically mild symptoms. And although our medicine, again, is approved in the US for cardiomyopathy, the story behind the idea of cefamidus and stabilization was born here. Sequencing studies in these individuals later revealed that they actually had two variants. So in addition to Val30-MET, they also expressed the, what's called the T119-MET variant. And it was discovered that this second variant was protective. It protected these patients against polyneuropathy. And here was born the idea that perhaps by engineering small molecules to bind TTR, we might be able to stabilize it and maintain that special four leaf clover like structure from falling apart. And that this treatment strategy might therefore slow TTR amyloid fibril uh, formation and perhaps lead to clinical benefits for patients. And this is what Tefaminus does it's a small molecule developed by Jeff Kelly and was specifically designed to bind to weakening TTR and stabilizing so that the TTR protein stays together longer in that four leaf clover like structure. And by slowing the breakdown of TTR, Tefaminus slows the formation and buildup of dangerous amyloid fibrils in the heart. So after the ATTRACT study, the FDA approved Tefaminus as Vindical 80 milligrams as four 20 milligram tab tablets or capsules, uh, and as Vindamax 61 milligrams as a single capsule to treat adults with cardiomyopathy of wild type or variant ATTRCM to reduce death and hospitalization related to heart problems. And you may be wondering why two different formulations here. Well, there are technical limitations to manufacturing Vindical, which is a megalamine salt formulation as a single 80 milligram capsule. So for patient convenience, Pfizer developed Vindamax which is a free acid formulation uh, to, to provide a single 61 milligram capsule once daily dose for patient convenience. And a single Vindamax 61 milligram capsule is bioequivalent to Vindical 80 milligrams dosed as four 20 milligram capsules. Importantly, there were no known side effects that happened during the treatment with Tefaminus in the ATTRACT clinical trial. And remember, tefaminus can help slow the progression of ATTRCM, but you may not feel an effect on your symptoms necessarily. In the ATTRACT clinical trial, patients taking tefaminus saw better results versus those on placebo in measures of quality of life, including physical abilities and social activities. And these quality of life results were noticed in as little as six months and remain consistent throughout the 30 month study. So with that, I thank you for your attention and hope this helps illuminate some of the mystery of ATTRCM and the mechanism by which our medicine to famitis works. And we feel invigorated by the opportunity to bring this therapy to patients. Thank you again. Happy to take questions afterwards. And I'll thank turn you. it back to you. Thank you so much, Ed. And we'll hold off the questions till we hear from our other stabilizers. Uh, we have lots of them, as you can well imagine, but uh, we yep. appreciate so much your, your explanation. All of the explanations today have been so good. We really appreciate them. Okay. and. and